at is saying, nope, get into the vibration, get into the alignment, open your heart, be vulnerable and drop the control because yeah. then life can enter. Um, you know, regenerating and building your brain to the circulation aspects, to its plaque eating capabilities and the mucous membrane eating capabilities that it has to clear your heart, your brain and your internal organs. And it was just this moment of, this is it. This is, you know, and cacao led me to this, you know, and following my heart led me to that. That was Nola Ganim, and this is the Yogi Triathlete Podcast. Welcome back, you guys. We're almost in the double digits, but let's just be here right now because you're not going to want to miss this episode. This woman is such a talented, skillful, and intuitive healer, massage therapist, energy worker, light worker, everything that you could imagine that you need healed in the body, mind, and spirit. This girl probably has done it. And currently, Nola is working a lot with this magical cacao, and I don't want to spoil too much about it. She's going to get into what it can do for you and where they grow it. It's just, it's very, very sacred. And during this episode, we are drinking a couple ceremonial doses um, that we created this elixir and it's, oh, you're going to hear the laughter and you're going to hear the connection and the heart opening because that's exactly what this stuff does. So I really hope you enjoy this episode with Nola. She is a world traveler. She is a lifelong student and she describes herself as the bridge between the spiritual intellect and the human intellect. There are no scripts for this show. There are no prepared questions for this show. This is about living in the moment. This is what Yogi Triathlete is all about. I want to share with you just a person on this planet that is so near and dear to my heart, someone who I haven't known for many, many years, um, but somebody that I feel that I've been connected with for many, many lives. So I give you now my good, good friend, Nola. Do you listen to Matt Kahn at all? Mm -mm. Amazing spiritual teacher out there. I really follow him and Bentinho Marsaro as well. Mm, um, you've told me about him before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there, but Matt Kahn specifically about what you were just speaking about, his whole thing is love which that which arises. So whatever's coming up, do I love you to your inner self, to these inner characters, inner beings, whatever's arising, love that. Yeah. And so it's more so like, you know, our old school meditation models and spirituality models were let it just pass, let it just float. Don't pay any attention to it. Don't pay mind. And I think the energies we're moving into and what you're talking about is embrace them. Totally you know, embracing welcome it. them. And so one of his talks he's talking about, and it was so perfect because I just went through this big time with this attack coming on or this, you know... Um, shadow aspect of myself, the dark shadow aspect, really getting my attention. And I wasn't wanting to listen because we're in this, like the new world and the new life is about following your bliss, staying in the high vibration, follow your joy, follow your highest excitement, da, 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 da. You know, that's your roadmap and that's all happening. And then here comes this just like self sabotage, like monger. It's right? going to come. That's it's the gonna thing. Come. It's going to come. And yeah. it's, what do you do with, how do you relate to it? Do you, exactly. my yoga teacher says, open the door. Invite it in. Totally. Make it a cup of tea. Right. Like don't tea push, party with the demons. Yeah. You know? Don't push it away and yeah. say, get out of here because that's the same energy. That's the same energy to combat it and say, get out of here. Yeah. It's not right. You're evil. Yeah. Welcome it in. Right. Turn it around. And so like this model of it was <clears throat> the way that he voiced it was, you know, he's sitting in meditation one day and he's had direct contact with archangels, you know, all the things since he was very young. And I think, you know, many of us have, we're just waking up to really realizing, oh my God, that's what that was. You yeah. Know? And it's not weird. It's not a coincidence. No, oh my it's gosh. not scary. It is what it is. It's you not know, a reality like, show on AMC. Like no. it's, it's the real deal. Absolutely. We're never alone. No, never alone. <laughs> and it's so much more further expansive than we can ever rationally understand, you know? And so in this meditation and in this bliss and quiet, but stuff's rising and all of a sudden out of this quietness, this voice, he's like, you know, this voice arose from my meditation in the quiet. And, and do you know what it said? It was the most profound thing ever. And it said, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> And it was all about like, oh, okay, like what's this? And it was like the shadow. It was the inner, um, 
saboteur, the rageful one, the asshole, the victim, the, you know, the bully, the all of them. And this whole model was honor it. I honor your power, shadow. I honor your power, anger. I honor your power, victim. And I did this the other day with myself and I was really feeling stuck and a lot was coming up. It was the day before the moon and just, oh my God, that moon. Hello. Oh my God. And I just let it come up and I let myself feel rage. I let that like sides come out. I was sitting on the ocean. I was by myself with the universe, you know, and just let it come up. And after I let it all come up, these parts of me were like, thank you. We just needed to connect with you and tell you we're here to support you. We're not working against you. Can you include us? Yeah. Because we are part of this as well. And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) right. You know, like you're not here to like chop my head off and kill me. You're not these like, you know, Illuminati energies coming at me. You are my (laughs) own energies that I'm neglecting because I'm trying to be this little peace and love thing and it's like no drop the perfectionism model and be real yeah I mean it's it's this I people have this idea you know they'll say to me I can't meditate because my mind's too busy or like there's this Mm -hmm. it's like the it's like the veil right like the veil that we all know that Mm -hmm. the veil that that this reality is the only reality like that veil but then what also comes is like this idea that meditation and being a yogi is super peaceful. It is like oh my god! It is like a typhoon. It's a hurricane. It's an earthquake. It's a tornado. It's all of these things, and then you're sitting in the middle of it, and you're just feeling all of that move around you, in you, coming at you, yeah. and you just have to sit there, like, and be like, I'm okay right now, mm-hmm. and see it, see it for what it is. But it's yeah. um, so this guy sounds very similar to like um. Byron Katie's work, like right. loving what is, what is, Absolutely. what is that energy, what is right now, and do um, the work. Yeah, I mean, her book, that book was a life changer for me. Same here. And I love that. Um, there's so many spiritual teachers. We're all saying the same thing. Absolutely. Because it is that simple. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. I mean, and it's just like yeah. eating well. It's simple. And we're moving into a world too, where it's like, I, you know, I was getting this download the other day of business models. I feel like are beginning to move the ones that are catching this wave of it's not about being the best it's not about winning the awards it's not about all of those things anymore if you're still rooted in that you're still in an old denser consciousness where it's more about let's all step into our joy and our love and our passions and powers and share it with the world and the world is going to support that if you're in alignment and then you will just be abundant and what you need will be there as opposed to all of these energies into building your business and marketing and that like create testimonial based businesses and you're sure to move forward because it's the power of the people like we all have the same stuff i've learned my own patterns enough where it's like when i'm in those really deep spots like the other day and having to let the rage exist that's rocket fuel because those are the places where you meet the bottom of the murky pond and then up you go yeah you can just ride this expansion of energy and dropping that place though and we're we've gotten to a place where we're really good at it of not this, okay, now that I'm through this next one, I'm here. Or, oh, yeah, oh, everything is going to be this. normal now. I just had this huge expansion, oh, God. now I'm there. And I yeah. thrived off of that in my 20s so much. Yeah. And thank God it got me here. But I was, I'm a dense shit, you know, and it took me yeah. so no. long. Hey, guess what? You're not there. You're just here right now until the next wave comes. And it's building. And, oh it's, and it's seeing the work that you've done. Totally. And it's like, oh, we can even be bigger the next time we yeah. come into shore. Right, right. Oh, where, my oh my God, now I'm enlightened and I'm going to change the world, you know, like yep. the, all that stuff. And, and it's just dropping, it's dropping the agenda like of yes. your whole life and, and especially like right in your day and in your moment. It's dropping all of that like when this arises and give it the work that it is asking for because these moments are like... They're, they're, they're moments, yeah, they're gold, man. They're like moments to heal. Like yeah. that asshole that like flipped you off, cut you off, almost killed you. What a guru, yep. right? Yep. Amazing, amazing, divinely mirror. gifted, beautiful human. Yeah, totally. Just like holding up a mirror. <laughs> awesome. I had a moment the other day too. I was like, you know what, universe? Fine. You're bigger than me. You're smarter than me. You're more how, how, how powerful than me. I get it. Fine. I give up. <laughs> like deliver me what I need show me what I need and bring it it is it's so good my dad has this line that he says that's gotten him through so much of his life and I found it so um utterly enlightening when he said it to me one day and he goes honey sometimes when you feel like you've just been walking through shit for so long 
you turn around and you realize that it was chocolate all along. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that, I mean, given my connection with cacao and chocolate and what I'm doing with that right now and sharing it with people and it's it's um, rising in the world and is so profound to mm. bring up because it's so true. You know, when we're in that inner place, it is. But I think we're both testimonials of keep going. You oh, know, my God. And trust yourself and hold true to your vision and your gut and just trust yourself. You came here for a purpose. Yeah, and never give up. And in those moments when it's so ridiculously delicious to make somebody wrong or <laughs> right like and then you get like and then like the ego bus pulls up and you're like come on guys like and everybody gets on they're like oh yeah you're you were so wronged and yeah. like those moments are so easy they are so delicious yeah. the only thing they do when you indulge them is bind you tighter to the negativity Crabs to that in the lower pot. yeah to that lower vibe and so you just you watch it you welcome it you smile you say Thank you for the opportunity to heal. Totally. Like, and um, I was giving some tools, like in uh, in this podcast we recently um, that we recently recorded on forgiveness, like the Ho'o Pono Pono. Do you know the Ho'o Pono Pono? Did you share? Have you ever shared the backstory of the Ho'o Pono Pono prayer? And how uh, you, you know what? I totally forgot to do that in yeah. the um, in the podcast. So, do you want to do it? Do you want to yeah. tell people about yeah. it? Yeah, sure. Share. Um, I don't remember the the gentleman's name, but he. So this man, do you remember his name? The I'm gonna look it up. Incredible man. So he. So basically, he got brought on as a um, a clinical psychologist, I believe, into a penitentiary's mental ward. So this was like incarcerated individuals that were also having, you know, major mental emotional up uprest. You know, it they was were in a mental um, ward. Dr. Halikala. Ihali Kala Hulen okay. was his name. Yes. Amazing man. So he went into this mental ward of an incarcerated individual's like serious hardcore. The really? turnaround rate for the employees was one to three months. They'd bring on the best of the best. They wouldn't last. The, even the doctors, the clinicians, the nurses, all the people were in there. It was like people did not last. It was just so dense, so heavy, so hard. Couldn't do it. So in comes this man. And within, I think, about three months of him being there, people started getting better. And the employer rate started lasting. And all of a sudden, things the were just walls, changing. Yeah, the walls were painted. Yeah, and yeah. There was music playing in the hallways. They were having, like, you know, upbeat, beautiful music playing and all of it. And so someone came in and they were like, what are you doing? What's the change? And he never once saw any one of the inmates um, in person. He never visited any of them in their cells ever. All he would do is sit in his office with their files and he would look at their photos. He would read what they did. And then, you know, this was like real deal stuff, you know? These were these were hardcore people. Oh, this and was like rape, murder. Just dirty, gnarly, low, yeah, just super dark, low vibe. Yeah. And he would sit and he would read their files and he would l and then he would look at their pictures and he would repeat the Ho'oponono prayer. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you and thank you. And the whole premise of it is you are me and I am you. And we're all the divine. So it's a prayer to the divine in you and the divine in them and the divine of all things of I'm sorry. Because if this exists and I'm a co-creator of all things, I'm a part of this existing. And please forgive me. I did not mean to create this. It's not in my intention to be creating this. But we come into humanity and we come into duality and, you know, we forget <laughs> yeah. what we are. Um, I love you. You know, I love you. Let's re let's reincarnate this. Let's shift this. And thank you. Like, thank you is like, let it be. So it is, you know. All yeah. Of that. And he would just sit and repeat this and see himself in them and their light would start to come out. Yeah. You know. And these people were, um, a lot of them were released. Yep. A lot of them were sent to... Um, like low minimum security, like these people oh, were, yeah, so I mean, beautiful. these people were rehabbing, completely healing and never even seeing this doctor. And I love, there's, there's a lot of stories online that recount this. And I love like the nurses were just like, oh, here comes another guy. Totally. Like he's going to be out. And, and, um, that most of the staff would be on sick leave because it was just such it's so intense. awful, like it was, yeah. it was such an intense place to be. And this guy healed them all. So um, this is a super, super powerful prayer of transformation and healing. No matter what has happened to you in your life, there is a way out of it. There is a way 
Throw like, it. Yeah, through it. Exactly. Thank you. Like, yes. through it. It's not about forgetting it. It's, you know, it's, it doesn't exist anymore, but that energy, if you're suffering, that energy is still in you. Mm-hmm. And so this is a great way to heal it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's super. I'm so excited so that you good. just told that story. Because yeah. after BJ and I recorded, I was like, I didn't tell the story. <laughs> but um, but then I just let it go. And yeah. then boom, here it, it is. is. So <laughs> living in alignment. <laughs> it all, you like, you just don't have to fret. Right. I know. <laughs> no right. fret. No fretting. No fretting. It's so easy to as well, right? Because it's like this new world, it's like let go and just pick up the breadcrumbs. You know, that's what Bentino Massaro calls it, picking up the breadcrumbs, just one piece after the next, like you and BJ are doing right now oh, yeah. for your adventure and your trip and how all of this came about. And it's absolutely incredible. But I mean, we are the forefront warriors, if you will, in this new energy. And we learned how to calculate, plan, and become generators of energy and yeah. creators and all of it. And at one point, that did take that kind of trajectory. We couldn't, you know, it wasn't so much all about getting in the raft and going with the current of the river at that point. It was almost like, no, the current is not leading me where I want to go because these are my patterns and what I've been playing out for so long. I actually need to get off the raft and figure this out. That's at least how I felt for a long time. And I also know I did take a harder path, you know. I loved going in and processing and figuring out the ins and the outs of my soul and my inner being because, and I went through a really intense dark night of the soul. I mean, we were working together in massage therapy during that period of time. Yes, um, we were. We were. Shit in the fan, you know, for sure. Mm-hmm. But now I look back and I understand now and am able to lead groups and assist people with the heart medicine of cacao around that because I went there and I turned over every rock and hell, you yep. know, and I found the headlamp of my third eye to be able to go through there and find the diamonds in the mine and find the gold that's in there. But under every rock was just this other microcosm of another world or another paradigm or another character within that was calling for my love that at some point I'd pushed away. Totally. And so yeah. where we are now, that ability to flow and be there is is the integration of yeah. all of those parts. And it's like you have this whole inner village inside that's like, let's do this. Oh my God, totally. And, oh and God, you and know if someone's not on board, right? Oh, and, yeah. and if you know the inner child or some aspect or you know some personality inside is not feeling up to it, then we just stop and we have a little inner conference meeting. Right. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, what are we missing? Getting all those faculties in this. Like, come so on, guys. Fun. We're all going in the yeah. same direction. Let's go. Yeah. And um, I have never, I can tell you that I have never had so much unknown. I don't know. I don't know where we're going to live. I don't know what this tour is going to look like. So good. Um, I don't know. I know a few things of connections we've made along the way. I don't know anything. All I know is the next logical step, which is right now sitting here with you having a conversation. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that we're not being tested daily. Like, well, you got to get tested to be on the magic bus. Yeah, dude. totally. You know, you can't just jump on that bus and think you're not going to flip off the exit seat. No, you're not. <laughs> you know, you got to vibe with it. Yeah. It's not like you just get on the magic bus and you're no. like, what a nice ride. Like the no. magic bus is continually about to drive off. I'm getting this vision from when I was in, um, I was in India and I remember before I went to India, this was 2009. And I remember people saying like, yeah, India's great, blah, blah, blah. It's the last place you want to get stuck. Like, you don't want to get stuck in India. Like, they haven't updated their laws since, like, you know, AD. You know, like, I just, like, there's just, you yeah. know, you don't want to get stuck there. Just don't so, get in the system and always keep Yeah, so what happens? We totally get stuck there. Like, um, we're completely fogged in. They cancel all the flights out of um, the valley for, like, a week. And we have to get back. And um, so we get this kid who's probably, like, I don't know, like, 17 years old. We give him a huge stack of rupees. And then a car shows up. And we get, like, five people in a fiat and it's like eight o'clock at night and we're driving to Delhi. It's 12 hours and you got to travel at night because it's like, you will die. It is so <laughs> effing scary driving in India. It's like, what do they say you need for, to drive in India, you need two things. You need good luck and a really good horn. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So we're, it, yeah. it's it pitch dark, you know, there's like five of us in a fiat. It's like, a, and I'm, and, um, the, you know, the driver, nobody, there's no communication whatsoever. There's a Hanuman swinging like crazy from the jumping mountains. Yeah, ju- yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, everybody else is kind of falling asleep and I'm like, okay, I got to stay up. Like I'm like kind of leaning forward to make sure the guy's <laughs> eyeballs are open. And we are on these roads in the Himalayas that I'm looking out the window cause the moon is so bright and I'm literally so you can probably seeing see blown up vehicles down there. Dude, yeah. I'm see- literally seeing buses yeah. like and cars just like that have perished and I'm sure the bodies are still in them. And I remember just saying like, okay, well, 
if I'm and nobody knew where I was. I had no communication. If I'm supposed to die in this car in the Himalayas tonight, then I'm okay with that. And um, and if not, then I'm going to be in Delhi at seven o'clock tomorrow morning. That trip changed my life because it brought me to. I came back at a whole different level of living because it was just. I saw that there was no agenda. The only uh, the only thing there was was the moment you were in, mm -hmm. and just the extreme faith I had to have in that um, in that cab ride, yeah. you know. And then the next day we showed up in Delhi and um, checked into a five star hotel and hit the spa. <laughs> I took like a four hour that's shower. That's balanced travel. When yeah, that's you do that. third world travel after you've done a few trips where you're like, oh, hostels are great. You know, yeah. once you do a few, a few of those, then you realize the very end of it, treat yourself. Yeah. I mean, sleeping with spiders that are the size of my face. You and get just over it. Covering you know? myself in peppermint oil yeah. so that they wouldn't yeah. come near me. And oh, then yeah. my girlfriend was like, oh, there's a five star Weston at the, at the airport. We're like, oh. yeah. And yeah. we're going there, right? Yeah. So we did. Yeah. But um, yeah, just amazing. Like, you just. You, you just have to trust. Like, we have to trust. Like Magic in the moment. And that doesn't take, a, 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 like, a weak heart. That's, like, trusting that you're always supported. That Oh, yeah. A weak heart wouldn't do any of it. A weak heart would not get in that car, wouldn't go, would stay put where they were, and it would call for safety, and they would get on yeah. the fast, first internet and, you know, yeah. call home and, and be totally scared. So what's required, um, what do you think is required to make a, a weak heart a strong heart? I think what's required to make a weak heart a strong heart is first realizing that there's no such thing as a weak heart. Mm -hmm. Hearts aren't designed to be weak. Mm -hmm. It's our most powerful aspect and it's it's the center of our life force. You know, our yeah, it's, chakra. From, it's from where we come, man. Absolutely. It's love. Absolutely. So, you know, if you consider yourself, oh, I am a weak person or I am a scared person, I say that's just a belief system that you've developed and all you need to do for that is take one step outside of your door and open your eyes to the earth, open your eyes to the people around you and do tiny things, small things like that are going to change your perspective. So even if that's making eye contact with people oh or my gosh. complimenting people, that's such or, a big one, you know, simple little things of that, or every single person that's around you start seeing yourself in them. When you see a flower, realize that that flower is growing for you just as much as you're here to smell it. Life is like, life. Those little pieces right there start to help give you that foundation. I feel that you belong here because I think a lot of what we feel is our weak heart is, you know, we're in such a crux of change in this planet right now where everything's at all time highs and everything's more accessible than it's ever been. You know, all of the spiritual teachings are just so available. You don't have to really work for them anymore. Yeah. Um, we're inundated with it. And that's also creating a very interesting society in many ways, but percolating so much to the surface of our awarenesses. So we're starting to question ourselves, which I think is oh my incredibly important and healthy and wonderful. It's everything to be an increase. Bring it down from the mental level and get into the emotional. So yeah, um, I think the first thing to realize is there's just no such thing as a weak heart and yeah. just one small step of courage. And all it takes is that little one. And then you realize, oh my God, that veil was like rice paper. Yep. But it, it looked like a brick and mortar wall that I could never cross through. Yeah. And if there's any, you know, I agree with you that there's there's not a weak heart. If it's not a weakness, it's a closure. Yes. And it's like opening that heart. And yes. I know you and I have talked about this immensely about, oh. about walking around like vulnerable. Oh. I feel like my intestines are oh. like hanging out of my mouth. It's brutal. It's brutal. To walk around and be, and then like be vulnerable. Like when I teach yoga, be vulnerable, stand up there and then make eye contact with yes. people. Yep. Oh I mean, my God. and both of us too being ones where we've talked about of yes, being sweet young girls, but also like tough girls too, you know? Yes. And realizing as well that like that super sweetness inside and especially um, being an empath as well of just, you know, coming here to understand the human condition. Um, and understanding a lot of that in a negative polarity at younger ages is we've learned how to protect ourselves, right? And yes. so I learned how to be strong, be tough, um, forge my own path. I didn't take the traditional route, so I learned how to be a warrior. But now this vulnerability is saying, drop it. Yeah. Be gentle. Be yeah. humble. Be vulnerable. Be authentic. And let and the I warrior come from that because that's 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 the um, that's the pure power. Oh my gosh. And not power as I'm I'm better than you no. or like. Um, love. Yeah, it's it's the power of love, which, I mean, that's the healing antidote right there. It really is, and that letting go, and, uh, you know, we learned in some forms how to create from learning how to control reality, right? 
Yeah. Like, this is how I want it. That's where manifestation was. This I'm going to deem it here. But now spirit and where we're at is saying, nope, get into the vibration, get into the alignment, open your heart, be vulnerable, and drop the control. Because yeah. then life can enter. Yeah. You know? So, um, so what is That's a great way for people to open their heart? Well, <clears throat> does it have anything to do life? with this amazing <laughs> pudding that we're drinking right now? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> of course, I've got the cacao queen here, oh and I wanted to make some cacao cashew lattes. So yeah, so Nola comes over, and I'm like, you know, Kate calls for two, you know, a tablespoon of cacao. She's like, what? So there's like four times the amount of cacao in this right now. Yeah. Um, which it's like amazing. So we're it's, having a ceremonial latte because we have about yes. an ounce and a half of the pure Guatemalan cacao that um, I import. Um, in here and a one and a half ounces of this pure cacao is a ceremonial amount so we've turned this morning latte into a beautiful heart opening elixir how does cacao serve as a way for people to um and, and i want you to talk about this particular <clears throat> cacao that we're drinking but how does this serve as um you know the impetus to open your heart mm -hmm. well I mean, there's, you know, we can talk about on a mental, physical, emotional, spiritual level. So we have all aspects of that. So, um, do you, which one would you like to hear about? You go, whatever it's, whatever well, is coming in. Well, cacao was utilized, um, by our ancient, specifically the Mayans and the Incas and the Aztecs, um, as a ceremonial connecting plant medicine. So they revered it and it's known as the food of the gods. So it was something that those of the highest vibrations that channeled the messages in for their civilization. So this is indigenous models of the old world where the shamans, the healers, and the ones that could see and communicate were really the heartbeats and the ones on the councils of society. So it's who people would go to for their information, knowledge, qualms, all of that, as opposed to politicians, you know, so they all sat together. Right, good decision. Um, massive, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, let's, let's lead with our heart as opposed to just our rationale, and let's receive information from the surrounding world around us. So the ancients really understood this, and very recently it's come to our attention through my teacher, um, a man named Keith Wilson, who's known as the Chocolate Shaman. Um, he lives down in Guatemala. He is a Westerner, um, and in absolutely incredible human being um his surname would be gandalf the great oh my god um, he's awesome i had the is. i had the pleasure of doing some ceremony on his porch and then um a one-on-one -on -one ceremony or one-on-one -on -one session with him when i was in guatemala last year and like you i went down to guatemala as you know and i was like all right i'm here let's do it yeah <laughs> yep, exactly. And you did. Oh, I got it done. Like <laughs> it whatever, wonderful. like it was to the max of, I believe what I was supposed to yeah. experience down there. Like yeah. I just walked down there completely sliced open. Yeah. Like, all right, let's do it. And, and that's the fastest way to acceleration, right? When I you go, amazing. you know what, I'm here and I'm going to show up and I'm willing to do whatever my higher self is guiding me into fastest path to accelerated existence. So I, I started going down there from following my breadcrumbs because I was a... I was a training junkie. I've been a professional massage therapist and working in the healing arts for over a decade now and have always run a divine schedule maker type business, meaning I've never marketed. It's very hard to locate and find me. All of that stuff has always had, you know, booked out and following and traveling around the world, studying the indigenous healing arts. And that's what my passion has been is bridging the modern world of intellect and understanding of our human physique and energy systems and all that with the in intuitive indigenous intellect of healing and um so inside and outside of the box and i've always been somewhat of a bridge um merging these worlds and this is really where my passion comes in is um you know it's the same kind of conversation as science for spirituality in the end we're all saying the same thing totally um and it's all holistic and it's all well-rounded and if we can combine these two things that's where you really get great healing so you know they say when you're te when the student is ready the teacher is there right well, I studied with a lot of master teachers around the world. I worked at multiple, you know, national and international holistic institutes, all of it, and got this incredible foundation around the healing arts and all of these seeds and information planted. And on one of my trips to Guatemala or in Central America, I heard about a man who works with empaths, who was called a chocolate shaman and lived in Guatemala and works um, 
he had what we call, you know, modern day Hogwarts, but a light worker's porch in Guatemala. So <laughs> Wait, I'm going to hold you there for just one second. For people who don't understand what an empath is, can mm. you explain that real quick and Absolutely. then just pick up where you were Absolutely. At, at Hogwarts? Absolutely. Yes. Hogwarts on hold. Um, an empath is somebody who internalizes the emotional or energetic, um, internalizes energies and emotions from the outside world and processes them internally inside of themselves. So are so, you doing it for them? Like are you taking it away for them and then correct. you have to... But so you're then, not aware of it. So it's often quite debilitating. So for instance, if you and I are sitting here, I am an empath, but I'm also in the expanded state of an empath where I'm fully aware of it. I'm very tuned into my energy center and my own emotions, which is a huge thing for empaths because... Basically, you think everything's about you. You're, you're taking on everyone's stuff. You're very psychically and empathically open. So um, when I was younger, and, and anyone who is an empath who doesn't understand that they are isn't quite been brought to the surface of their consciousness that they are yet, you'll resonate with this where people just open up to you. People come in and they have conversations with you and it's very easy for them to instantly have trust. But what ends up happening is all of their pain, all their emotions whether it's physical, mental, emotional, it leaves them and it comes into you and you take it on. Um, a lot of empaths spend a lot of time in ups and downs, in depressions and isolation, and a lot of physical pain and discomfort, social anxiety, um, manic behaviors, bipolar, um, and also that super creative, passionate being that just can't get out of their own way. You know, I find that that's a lot of the empaths as well. And I think that there are so many of us out there trying to figure that out. And so really what's going on is you are serving as a emotional garbage dump for the consciousness of humanity when you're unconscious. Right. It's just coming into you and filtering through. Um, but the further meaning of that is you're a light worker and you have a higher agreement that you came into this planet to help clean this planet up. Yeah. You came in to understand the human condition. You yeah. came in here to literally eat it, to eat the densities, to take those emotions and vibrations into your body. So your subconscious mind, energetic chakra system, emotional body, nervous system could take in those vibrations, take in those particles of emotion, physical energies, all of it, and process it, digest it. And so it's all in the unconscious registry bank. It's all there. And so what that means is you hit a point when you start bringing this into consciousness and we have a way of working with empaths so you no longer have to internalize these energies and process them in an often very debilitating way, but how you can effortlessly and powerfully assist others in cleansing and clearing these densities from them and lifting them, clearing them to higher sources, higher energies that know how to take care of them, clean them up, and then bring in the new cleaned up energy. So that complete side of healing where we not only lift the heavy, but we bring in the light. And this is what specifically really what Keith specializes in is working with empaths, right? Like light worker school. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and his, um, and not just empaths, you know, yeah, not just empaths consciousness. He, yep. he is an, I am now as well. I've been working with him for six years and have gotten very highly trained in this work, um, and able to be bridging it out as well as many of his other regular students, which is really beautiful. Um, we're all, there's a patchwork of us out there in the world running regular groups, um, so we would be what you'd call an intuitive processor. Um, and that's what Keith is. Um, and you know, also shaman. So, so basically we follow you. What Keith has trained us to do is he teaches no technique at all. What he does is we drink cacao. That's our medium. Um, one cacao opens the heart chakra, um, on a metaphysical level. It also releases all of the love and bonding hormones. So it naturally releases oxytocin. Um, it activates the serotonin and dopamine in the brain, so it's a natural antidepressant. Um, it has very high levels of magnesium, which relax all of your muscle tissues in your body. Um, it has over 621 compounds of antioxidants in it, and the list goes on of its, its health benefits for you. Um, but in this very specific cacao that we work with, it's indigenous. It grows on the Pacific slope of a cloud forest in Guatemala, um, where we have a very close relationship with the indigenous families that live on the land and have farmed it for generations. It's all natural growth heritage forest. Um, it's hand-picked, hand-harvested, hand-peeled, hand-dried, hand-delivered, hand-roasted, hand-ground, 
hand packaged and then right to your and I've seen the little factory in Keith's backyard absolutely and it's filled with love it's heaven it is and and every single block is blessed by him and it's shipped worldwide and um you know we just had 10 tons delivered to his his little bodega and you know the business is growing to such a place where there's just such a high demand for cacao because the stories of how it's changing people's lives just keep pouring. Oh my God, I had major, I mean, you were there for them. I had, it's absolutely gorgeous. May, may, I've had a lot of um, release, like energetic movement and things like that in my journey. And I can attest to um, just the, the huge um, opportunity that, that this magical uh, chocolate has yes. to, um, to healing, to reaching new heights yeah. of vibration in your life yeah i mean we where we're at with it and in the way that the cacao spirit communicates with us and how this all came about um was indigenous myth you know it states that when the balance between man and nature has reached such a state that we've forgotten how to love the cacao spirit will return from the rainforest to teach us to love once oh, again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and this that's is the time. what you experience in cacao ceremonies and working with the cacao where, you know, we're so centered in this place where, yes, we drink cacao. Yes, you're going to learn all about the incredible aspects that it's going to assist you in your life from, um, you know, regenerating and building your brain to the circulation aspects to its plaque eating capabilities and the mucous membrane eating, eating capabilities that it has to clear your heart, your brain, and your internal organs. So this is and, great for somebody high cholesterol, oh high blood pressure, it's anything that deals with diabetes, the heart. Diabetes, all yeah. of it. Yep. Anything that ails the heart, it's incredible. Um, a lot of um, women actually are using cacao in conception and throughout their pregnancies as well and they're birthing like super children. Oh my god, I think this would be amazing before like um, sharing in like a sexual experience it is. like with your mate. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> Nola says it's yes. It's absolutely beautiful because what you do is you have that opportunity to open your heart, open your energy systems and then after you have a ceremonial cup of this and now the thing that people need to realize as well and I've done my fair share of research on this through and through Keith as well as this isn't just every chocolate. You know, it's not just every cacao. Um, it's very specific to, we only source from a very specific and small area because the energies are right. The growing conditions are correct for it. And so it has the vibrational goodies that we need to do the inner work with it. Yeah. So cacao is amazing for that aspect because it really opens you and gets you going. And um, after you have about, you know, a half an hour after a ceremonial cup, your crown chakra starts going up into other dimensions. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm and you're full just on the, like yeah, we're shedding fine. the body right now. Totally. <laughs> Where other cacaos, they're amazing and they're great if you're using them for physical purposes, the nutrition-based purposes, all of that. But really for the inner ceremonial purposes, I personally haven't found another cacao that um, has brought the same energetic qualities to me. But if anyone out there knows of some and is using it, please do get in touch and send it our way. Um, I would love to play and experiment with that. Yeah, that would be um, that would be great. Um, yeah. Tell a little bit about um, this amazing place that I had the absolute pleasure um, to visit last year. And it wasn't like um, something where I, you told me, okay, I'm going to San Marcos. Um, and it wasn't like, oh, I'd like to go. Let me do some research, blah, blah, blah. You said to me, I'm, go, I'm going back to see Keith or I'm going to the chocolate shop or going to Guatemala. I don't know exactly what you said. And I remember my response was, I am too. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because I was like, I would like to go. It was like this message came in yeah. like, you're going. She and calls to people. Yeah. And I, had a, um, a big and I had a dream, um, a, a vision not too long after that of me swimming in this lake. So can you just do a quick... Um, this place is ridiculously powerful. A quick yeah. like description of what um, Lake Adeline in yeah. San Marcos is like. Yeah, um, Lake Adeline is known as one of the most beautiful lakes in the world. It it's is a oh. high elevation volcanic caldera lake. Um, there are there's still one active volcano around it, but there's seven large volcanoes that surround this area. Three that are very visible, um, and this lake is located in the Mayan highlands of Guatemala. And it is over a thousand kilometers deep and 10 kilometers wide. Um, no one's really ever been to the bottom of the lake. Very auspicious things happen 
um, when um, you know scientists go down there, their equipment electronics start going all funky and wiry and all that. So, oh my God, that's amazing. Um, Lake Atitlan is known as a vortex. <clears throat> the Mayans believe that Lake Atitlan is the umbilical cord of Mother Earth. And they also believe that it's where all life comes from and all life returns to. So when you get into the indigenous languages of the Mayans, the um, Quiche, Kachikal, all of that, there's so many different dialects dependent upon the village and where they are. They don't have a word for leaving. There's no word for leaving. Everything is always going home. Because in their belief system, you're always going home. You're never leaving. And you're always returning back to source. And so it's just this very, like, there's just these incredibly beautiful things about the Mayans. Like, they don't have a word for door. Um, they don't believe in doors in the in the old indigenous sense. It's doors are to keep people out. Doorways are to let people welcome and come in. So that's why you would build a home. So Lake Atitlan is this anomaly of a vortex. Um, the energy on Lake Atitlan is also about a year and a half of before the rest of the world. That's right. So I about that. it's a really great place to go do deep inner work and yeah. acclimate yourself and then come back and then you're like, oh, I'm kind of floating around here. You know, it's always a little bit of a shift going through the ozone layer, I call it, getting back out of the, oh, in modern the, day the society. Re, yeah, the integration. Yeah, is the acclimating and all that and, and the consciousness best, shift. My experience is best to kind of stay a little, lay a little low, um, especially if you're coming back to a dense environment yes. give like, yourself integration time yeah, yeah. um Incredible. and um the day i arrived um the volcano one of the volcanoes erupted fuego, fuego yeah. erupted and the day that i left she, did she erupted well. again yep and i have pictures of of both of that i remember i flu. was yeah i was um i was in the van going up like the the craziest switchback mm -hmm. like pitch in mm -hmm. this you know creaky old truck oh yeah and um i turned around and i saw her erupt again and i was just like it's that was, it was amazing it's powerful what, it's a very communicative lake that's the thing that you realize is the consciousness is so connected oh i swam in that lake and i'm a strong swimmer and i love to swim and i swam in that lake and she took my breath Away. She'll tell you. Oh, and she's so powerful. <laughs> they call her the Lady of the Lake. You know, yeah. she calls her children, and it, it's like other places. Like you hear this about Hawaii. You hear this about other places. She either will welcome you, or she will take you and chew you up and spit you right out. Oh, you know, yeah. like your consciousness is ready. No, it's not. You know. Yeah. And, oh, I felt so embraced when I was there, uh, and I know that it wasn't the last time that I'll go. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. So I know um, we're gonna do like a logistical, real world um, time check here. So it's two thirty. I know you have oh. an appointment. What time do you need to leave? Um, I have an appointment about chocolate. Yeah, of course. What Making you ceremonial chocolate. What baby? else would you have an appointment for? Mm -hmm. um, right, because you're going to be starting now. You, are you selling it now? I mean, you're kind of like selling it. Like you're you're always driving around with a car full that just smells like chocolate. Yes, I have over 200 pounds of cacao that I brought back with me from Guatemala. <laughs> um, it was wild coming home because <laughs> normally the customs guys were like, you know. Someone to me was like, are customs guys always with southern accents? I'm like, no, but it's funner that way, you know? Like, they're like, oh, they're like, ma'am, we're going to need you to open your bag, please. Yeah. You and know? you're like, it's chocolate. Yeah. And it's like so, these bricks. You feel like the super awesome, yeah, like, really um, awesome drug dealer in a I'm very good way. Chocolate cartel. All yeah, totally. So, um, you know, they'll check the bags. I'll have, you know, I'm really great communicator and all that. And I just go to glow. You know, one of the meditations that we do is to raise your vibration with the cacao. And it's finding the smile in your heart and going to glow. And just everything smooths out and turns like yeah. creamy as butter in your life. So it's in here. I have the cacao. Um, you know, I sell it by the pound right now to people. And I'm supplying a lot of people. And the incredible thing is folks coming to regular cacao ceremonies, like, they're getting new jobs lining up. Old tra traumas and patterns are just eliminating. They're moving through them in their lives. They're having deeper communications with their children. Um, one woman in, in particular that I'm just blown away by, she has a, a degenerative autoimmune disease with her eyes and her vision where she's been losing her vision for years. She was on over five prescriptions daily mm -hmm. for them. Very thick glasses, all of it. She's been coming to regular ceremonies with me for the past three or four months, and she's off of all of her prescriptions. Her autoimmune disease has gone into complete remission, and she only has to wear a very thin contact now. That's amazing. Yeah, so, so how would people, so are you, like if somebody wanted to buy it, how, how yeah. would they get in touch with you at this point? Mm -hmm. Because we want to support this amazing work that thank you're doing. Thank you, thank you. Well, of I'm course. in the process right now of building a website and having it available for online sales. Um, I'm also working with a chef so that we can create ceremonial chocolates available for people where it can be ceremonial doses or daily doses because it's also great for athletes. Um, it's what the Sherpas yes. used to climb mountains, you know. Um, when you look back at the conquistadors, they're widely quoted as 
These, these indigenous have these magical beans. When you eat five or six of them, it's incredible. You can trek in the jungle with no food or water for up to five or six hours. Totally. There's been so many times that I've taken, both BJ and I have taken like a little baggie of beans yeah. and hopped on the bike for like a four hour it's ride incredible. and just popping just some die. beans along the way. Yeah. And um, it's like, it just gives blood to the legs yeah. and um, it's you easy on the belly. Need. And then you're like going to glow on your yeah. tri bike. <laughs> I mean, that is like Yogi triathlete riding the high vibe right there. I mean, Excellent. it's amazing. Excellent. Yeah. So we're working on that. So we're going to be able to have it available for everyone. Um, right now, the best way would be, you know, you can find me on Facebook at Nola Ganim. Um, you can email me, nolaganem at gmail.com. And that's G-A-N-E-M. Correct. N is in Nancy, M is in Mary, N-E-M. Um, and I will be having a website up very soon. Now, um, the name that we were working with was Cloud Forest Chocolates. Um, but now that you just called me Cacao Queen, that could oh, be really fun too. So you're we'll see. totally the Cacao Queen. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> we'll um, we'll see where that goes. But we'll definitely you know make a point to keep it posted. And as soon as I'm live with the website and and you know up and accessible with that, we can link you in. And I also host um, ceremonies twice a month, and I'll be starting chocolate yoga down at the beaches in the morning for the summer. Um, and it'll just be early morning flow and glow. We'll have a cup of cacao together and then we'll do, for me, I'm a, I'm a mashup mix up yogi. So it's going to be like, you know, we may be doing some Tai Chi. We might be doing some breath work. We might be doing some partner work. We may just be dancing this morning. It's not a very, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, like, don't come with your type A agenda because no, go do because... that somewhere else, work out and then come to connect, you know, yeah, go to the gym, yeah. throw around some plates yeah. and then come to chocolate yoga. Yeah, this is Central American style. We're and, very laid back. And you're doing this all on Aquidneck Island in Newport, Rhode Island. And um, so people can come if they're in Massachusetts, if they're Absolutely. in Connecticut. Like, and we travel, you know, I mean, if you want to host a ceremony or have this happen in any of your spaces, um, wherever you are. I'm, I'm super happy to jump in the car and travel. I do oh. ceremonies to go. Yeah. I also work privately with people and do individual sessions over Skype, um, on the phone, and in person. Perfect. Um, which are amazing. I can tune right into you. You know, distance doesn't matter at all. Yeah. I mean, I work with my meditation teacher. He's in Laguna Beach, and Absolutely. I'm here. Yep. Um, you just came back from an amazing trip. Um, back to Guatemala because she keeps inviting you back and yeah, so um, you know so tell us well I guess, I guess I'd say that really goes all in in line with what you and I were talking about of always trust where you're going you know trust your vision trust your God and trust your faith because you don't know where that's leading you and, and but you do know that you're headed somewhere right and and um, so yeah and let go of where that is totally you know, and when I when I choose what I'm doing, you know, it's always much more pretty flashy and prestigious than what's really happening, right? But when we tune in with our higher self and our true hearts and where we're going, it's it's about love. Yeah, and it usually has to do with like um, dirty feet and some bo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At like, least for us, yeah. you and I know that. I mean, just <laughs> full on, you know, absolutely. So the work with my, as an empath, right? Starting this work, meeting Keith. Doing the work with the cacao, going on the porch, working regularly every single week for the past four or five years. So it intense. Just, it has been incredibly intense and just cycling through so much that I feel really unified in who I am now and very aware of what I came here on this planet to do. Oh, it's and, amazing. And the answer is so simple and it annoyed me for a while because I wanted this very complex answer, but the answer is love. Um, the answer is my highest form and my highest degree and ability is love and connecting with people and also bringing people together and sharing what I've learned. And so that's what I want to do in my life. And um, I really spent a period of time just letting go of, you know, having my Rolodex of certifications and all of that crap, which I still have. And they're great, but. Oh my God, you'd be so proud of me. I ripped up all, because you and I shared office space at one point. And I remember you telling me the first time you walked in, you saw my ego wall. Oh my God. Which was like, like, you know, graduated with high honors, orthopedic and sports massage therapist, which is, you know, not taking anything away from somebody who has that. But that wall defined me. And in my moving and my purging, you know, what happened to those certificates? kids whoosh, right down the middle there and chucked them just and it, love them. it yeah. was just like I don't need that that is part of who I am and it is how I am helping people heal yeah is through this knowledge of the body that I have yeah and um so anyway it's, it's so um, great you gotta well, let go of all that stuff is such you do and that's where courage comes in right the way that I understand it now is none of us came into this lifetime to learn anything new we came here to do way too much and there's not enough time. So everything that you need, everything you know, all of it is in there. All you have to do is uncover it, open the doors, go through it and find out and let it come back to the surface because it's all plugged in. So it's about waking up to who you are and what you've already done. You've already done it in other lives, parallel, past, future, they're all the same. So 
I linked up with the Global Health Works Foundation. The Global Health Works Foundation, please check them out. They have a website, they're on Facebook. You can follow them online. You could also please, we're a 100% donate based organization. 100% of proceeds go to the programs um, and it's personally funded um, from the founder, Dan Wunderlich who's an incredible acupuncturist. Is he out of New York City? He's out of New York City. He teaches neurofunctional acupuncture. He's he's just, he's one of the top notch guys. And I've, I've done a lot of volunteer work in my life. I've been a part of a lot of organizations, a lot of holistic organizations, large scale, small scale, all of it. And a lot of them look pretty, they sound great, but they're highly disorganized. I mean, dealing with a bunch of new age holistic people can often be a nightmare. Oh, but you, right? put, a, you put a New Yorker behind the, it? And, and holy mother, man, this is one of the most clean, highly organized, and well-run organizations I've ever been a part of. And it is top-notch practitioners. So the way that this foundation works, the Global Health Works Foundation has a year-round mobile clinic um, in high-grade holistic healthcare. And we provide free high-grade holistic health care to underprivileged communities in the Quiche and Chichicastenango region of Guatemala. Um, so three days a week, a, a Western train, my friend Gregory Radicone is running the program right now, and um, get in a van, load it up with massage tables, acupuncture needles, herbs, supplies, all of it. And then we have a team of local Guatemalan and Mayans that are, we call promedores that have been trained. We've trained them in ear needling, nadi, um, Reiki, yoga, movement, some counseling work, and massage therapy techniques. Amazing. And so we all get in a van together and go to these villages, go to remote areas, and we return week after week to different ones. And sometimes you'll see 30 people, sometimes you'll see 100 people in a day. And it's clinic style. They come in, they get their treatments, get what they need on their way. So in the past three years, this clinic has maintained this weekly. It's never missed any periods of time. It's trained and treated multiple, multiple amounts of health promoters. So then they can also go back into their respected towns and villages and spread that. So aside from the mobile clinic, which I was a part of and got to receive incredible experiences from and you were service. just getting into that when I was there last year yes I re- yeah yes. I remember that you were getting ready to hop on in. the chicken bus yep. and head up to Kiche yeah right when I was leaving and the I was so jelly yes I wanted to go yes yeah it's just incredible and so <laughs> twice a year <laughs> twice a year this foundation runs what's called a hornada and a hornada is a large-scale medical clinic of any form. Basically, a hornado is anything where you're bringing a lot of people together for a concentrated period of time for a specified purpose. And so we run a hornada twice a year, and we will generally treat about 1,000 to 1,500 people in five days. And so I was just recently down there for two weeks. Um, this time it was a team of Dan, the founder, four acupuncturists, me, the massage therapist, a Reiki master. Um, another Westerner that was doing triage, which is intake work, and then about a team of maybe 15 local health prom- promoters, promotories that we've trained. And so all of the acupuncturists, massage, like we all have to see everyone, and then we have assistance from the locals. So a very small team of us saw 1,200 people in five days. I found out while I was there, hey, I'm going to be teaching classes, because last year when I was there, <clears throat> I'm a practitioner of the Mayan abdominal massage. And that was actually what brought me to Central America originally was studying my abdominal massage with the Arvigo Institute and Rosita Arvigo in Belize. And from there is where I ended up into Guatemala. No mistakes. No, 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 none at all. And so one of my passions is also returning back the um, indigenous healing techniques that was, that have been lost to the indigenous and then turn into Western modalities and then returning it back to them with the techniques that we have. So we can really create this full circle global synergy of healing. And so I got to train last year um, the local promedores in mind abdominal massage and did a three-day workshop with them. And when I came back this year to the Hornada, they were... <laughs> I might cry. <laughs> you won't be the only one who... <laughs> you won't be the only one who's cried on this. They were like all these women and the men, they were running up to me like, mm. you know, and I'm like horrible horrible spanish you know all i can say is mi corazón es mucho feliz like my heart is so happy 
And we're laughing and crying and talking and dancing and they're speaking quiche and chichi and Spanish and talk, telling me stories of how it's helped their family. Or And you're just like, I don't even <gasps> hardly know what you're saying, but this is amazing. But I understand everything about the love, you know? And they're like, show us more. Can we learn more? And they're like showing me the hand positions and what they've done and working to massage me and come see my baby or come see this. And I, mean, I had a woman tell me this time, like I already told my husband that when we conceive because you've helped us so much our firstborn child will be named nolan you're the godmother like indigenous oh women. i just got chills i know so at this clinic i got to do um 75 indigenous midwives came and i was asked to teach them quick massage techniques now mind you these women are um from villages they are hardcore real deal salt of the earth woman where you know they're maybe five feet they have the most beautiful cortas and indigenous fabrics on and most of them have probably birthed like you know up to 500 babies oh something. yeah these women are hard yeah. nothing they are unshakable yeah and so hi i'm little white girl nola here to teach you about <laughs> your midwives you know like, like hi, i'm here to teach you something that's like <laughs> but they show up with uh, no expectation uh, other than we are here to receive what yes. you are here to yes. give because you are here for a reason, yes. right? Like, and we're offering ourselves from our hearts. This is a very heart-centered in, um, organization with top-notch practitioners. And we all, you know, none of us, we're all volunteers. Of and course. so, so I, okay, you got 20 minutes. You have three groups of 25 women coming in, five minutes in between, 20-minute classes. Ready, go. Oh, by the way, it's going to be translated into three languages as well. Go teach them something. That's the best way to jump into something. Jump there's in. like, there's no time yeah. for you to be like, I'm not good enough. No, no. Hi, just, Anola. This is what we're doing. I want to yeah. help you. I'm going to teach you some uterine positional techniques um, and a little bit of sacral work to assist in blah, 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 blah. So do it. We do some hands-on work. We talk uts in uh, kiche means good. Uts, uts uh, jai jai means like, oh yeah, that's real good. They go, uts jai jai, you know, because I'd be practicing on them. And I would get a lot of feedback of, we can see what you're doing. We see how you come from your heart into your hands when you connect. We see how you're actually listening and paying attention to the woman that's on the table and looking her in the eyes and staying tuned into her entire body, her mental, her emotional you know, being a good practitioner and also teaching all of us. And I always would check in to get the feedback from them. You know, I do a few strokes. I show them some positional work. I'm going to go, how do you feel? She goes, pain's gone. I say, look, that was five minutes of massage. That's it. While I'm talking with you, look how much you can assist. So, so part of my passion is showing how easy it is to enable ourselves and that our bodies are pliable. We're like clay. You know, when clay's hard, it doesn't move. You warm it up, you get some heat in there, you give it some love, it will form into whatever direction you give it. Our bodies are the same way. They follow our intentions in our direction, right? Mm -hmm. So massage therapy um, is, is you know, that's basically the premise of it when I look at it and I take all the technical signs out of it. We're assisting and touch is the first form of healing that ever existed. You know, something hurts, you rub it. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, so what ended up happening from that experience was... You know, I had the, it was a really profound moment with the last group that I worked with and they all started talking. And it's... You know, like a, it's an indigenous language. And you could tell this was like one of the like wise, you know, the elders of the elders. Oh, yeah. And they all start talking and I'm saying, oh, yes, yeah. And they're nodding and talking. And uh, this woman, Sebastiana, who's the translator for me. And Sebastiana is this. She, during the Civil War and the genocide, she, her and her mother took people up into the mountains, the revolutionaries, and they took them up into the mountains and kept them alive while people were being slain and murdered. And she has a Rolodex and wrote a book on herbalism um, and maintained it. She has herbs and jars stayed at her house and does clinics and trainings. And she's part of an underground shaman circuit between Mexico and, you know, throughout Mesoamerica and just incredible, incredible people there. And they all see me, you know, and they see what my passion is and what I want to be sharing and coming from my heart. And that's what they're doing too, and able to assist and help others. And what she was telling me, because she was translating, well, translating from the Quiche to Spanish, and then the Spanish translator was translating to me, they're all speaking about how important it is that we're having these dialogues, how grateful they are to be brought together from their different villages and communities because they don't have this kind of support there, and they don't get to share techniques with other women. They just do what they've been taught from their 
grandmothers, mothers, all of that, the other line. So how one, how grateful they were to have this opportunity to come together, to learn something to really help their friends and their communities and their people because they're ready and they want, they want to feel good. They want to heal. They will do it. You know, it's just about educating and assisting them. Um, and they said, when, when can you come back? When can you be here? Please, please, please come back. And so as this is going on and they're, they're talking back and forth, I had this moment, it was like an avatar when he's under the AWA tree and they're all welcoming him in and they're speaking and the tree's coming alive and the energy's moving and the synergy's happening and I'm streaming tears. The translator's streaming tears. She's hugging me like, thank you for looking after our culture and coming back and sharing this with us. And it was just this moment of, this is it. This is, you know, and cacao led me to this, you know, and following my heart led me to that and all of it. And um, so I just got an email yesterday um, from this connection and these women giving feedback to their promoter. The um, director of the midwifery school in Guatemala is flying up to Vermont because there is a rotary club there that's going to be giving them a large donation to help support their program. And they asked to get in contact with me because they're gonna drive down to Newport and wanna meet with me about creating an extension of the midwifery program with reteaching the Mayan abdominal massage to the Mayan midwives. And I'm um, hoping that this can be an extension of the Global Health Works Foundation um, and keeping it all under that umbrella because this organization introduced me to them and having more of a women's clinic of free health care available to them. Wow. So it's all opening up and sharing and cacao is going to be a huge heartbeat of this um, all in service work and just, you know, just keep letting the layers fall off and your true self comes through. Yeah. Beautiful. And so... You know, just a um, quick, like, final word, word to somebody out there who needs this message. Like, what is it all about? Like, how do, how do they um, start to, li to lift that layer? Like, what is it that you can um, leave just one word of advice of, you know, how they can start to live in alignment? When you're, like, we're our own biggest obstacles, you know? Yeah. I know I've been my own biggest obstacle, but... Just take one step, you know, even if that's laying in bed and having every single reason to not get up out of bed that day, take five minutes to walk outside or let yourself go where you need to go. If you need to sink down, go sink down, but go there with the light. Welcome the light with you because we live in a society that, you know, look pretty, show up, all of that. My life is wonderful. We know white picket fence, and that's just varsity. It's not real. You know, as, as cliche as it is, you're not a human being. No. You are a being of light that came here to get a human body and have an experience. And the human experience is all about duality. It's all about light and dark and the divine dance, right? So realize that. And when we can realize that, then you give yourself permission to go where you need to. Be high, be low, be in the middle, but bring love with you and learn how to be gentle. It's beautiful. Coming that's, from that's, a fighter, you know. Yeah, that's an amazing place to to wrap this up. Um, so Nola, I I love you oh, so so much. I love you too, sister. <laughs> Thank you so much for having and, me on yeah. here. It's my honor, and I you've always supported and fueled me and believed in me, and um, I'm just so ready to rock and roll. I know, and even though I haven't been able to come to the ceremonies because of like this this material world conflict, like. I just, I see the work that you're doing and I'm, I'm watching, um, like the interaction on the Facebook page and it's just, you are, you are uh, the facilitator for people to allow light into their lives and you're doing it here and you're doing it in different countries and you're, I mean, you're, you're so, um, you're just boundless and you are so, so powerful because of what you've allowed yourself to step into and go through and feel. So, so I am just so grateful to share you with everybody who listened um, today. And so, you know, we always say just share it with your friends and, you know, go give someone a hug and um, <laughs> ride, ride, ride that high vibe. Yep. Right? And follow it, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't listen to the doubts of other people. Just follow it. No. Forget the naysayers. Um, love them, but just let Sometimes them go. just say bye. Jump yeah. on that board and ride the wave, baby. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you so much. Thank you. Love All right. That was it with Nola. I mean, just having her words in your awareness is going to help raise the vibration of your life, right? So everything is energy. Everything has a charge to it. 
So similarly, if we put ourselves in front of the TV and watch a lot of fear-based, you know, news, um, negative things, um, or if you're around people that are kind of riding that lower vibe of life, understand that that is all going to have an effect on you. So it all boils down to just being mindful, you know, living life breath by breath and just watching what you're putting yourself in front of, watching the vibration of the food that you're putting into your body and how it makes you feel. And this is how we start to raise that vibration. This is how we start to find, you know, our purpose in this life. And this is how we start to get the courage and the bravery and the heart opening to live in alignment and just being okay with the unknown that comes with that. So these are all the steps, you guys. We're going to keep coming at you every Friday with a new episode, with a new um, beautiful being to bring into your awareness. And um, in the meantime, just uh, keep riding that high vibration of life.